Hey, what's going on? On today's episode, we're talking about the parts of the guitar and everything that you need to know when you're just getting started. All right, so a bit of housekeeping. I just got done editing and I realized that I went on and on with a bunch of my different guitars um, and it was just too long. So I'm splitting it uh, I'm splitting the guitar parts video into two sections. So I originally shot this, I was experimenting with two cameras, so I'm not necessarily looking at the camera when, um, when I'm doing this, this video. So, um, you know, Chris and I tell you to go practice things, new things. Uh, so that's what I was doing. I was experimenting with a two camera setup and didn't go as planned. So, but the content's still good. It's a guitar video, so you should be looking at the guitar anyway. Um, and yeah, I hope you like it. I uh, also want to just call out a couple of things, uh, editorial things. So in the acoustic section, um, I failed to mention that we acoustics that have the electronics in them, um, you'll see the top of the body, I have a... An, um, an EQ, volume, you know, all this stuff. Um, typically for the acoustic electrics like that, there will be a compartment for a nine volt battery. So that will either be um, as like one unit, you know, built into the guitar, uh, or it'll be, you know, somewhere else on, the, on either the side or the back of the body for um, those electronics to, to actually work. So I just wanted to call that out because I failed to mention that while I was filming the original video. Uh, also, I need to correct myself. Um, I mentioned at the beginning of this video the fanned frets that, that some guitars have, where instead of being you know straight up and down, they are you know sort of like this. And um, the thing that I, I said is that it you know it would be like you know this diagonal up top as well as at the back and that's false um typically it will be longer up here for the the top strings and then longer down here for the top strings but a shorter scale length so you can uh you can see it's like this uh usually for fan frets so that there's a longer scale length for the top strings the lower strings um than the high ones so again this is just part of intonation um you know calling out my own mistakes. So, um, yeah, anyway, all that being said, you know, go to links, uh, to other great gear channels are, uh, in the description below, you know, that if you, you need extra help, um, they do a great job of explaining, uh, the instrument or the, the pedals and all the other, you know, amps or whatever that we will end up using. Um, also, created chapters for all the different parts of the guitars that are discussed in this part two. So, you know, if there's something specific that you would like to see, by all means, go, go look at that. Um, so without further ado, here's part two of parts of the guitar. The other thing to talk about is scale length. What that means is from here to the top of the um, top of the fretboard. What is that measurement? So I prefer the 25.5 inch uh, neck. Those are longer on seven strings or eight strings uh, or baritone guitars. You can see even longer, 27 inches, uh, 28 even on some. Um, Les Pauls. Gibson's, uh, Paul Reed Smith's are smaller, either 24 and a half inches uh, in scale length or 24.75 inches. So what that means is if you're going to be doing a lot of the down tuning or um, yeah, a lot of the a lot of the down tuned lower sounds. Um, if you have a shorter scale length guitar, they won't be able to handle those down tuned, the you know, massively down tuned sounds very well because the strings will be too floppy. If you have a longer scale length, 
you'll be able to maintain that string tension that will make the guitar a lot better to play, a lot easier to play. So that's something to keep in mind. And it also, um, because of physics and math that I don't know how to calculate, but I know exists, um, the scale length will impact the spacing of the frets because of the intonation. Uh, that is a whole rabbit hole you can go into and you can now find guitars that have basically squiggly lines for frets uh, and they're, the claim is that they're more in tune um, you know, at each individual position on the guitar than just these standard, um, these standard frets. So another thing you might see is a fanned fret guitar and what that means that is attempting better intonation with these extended ranges. Um, one of the things that that does as well is you can have two scale lengths simultaneously. So the, the lower strings that will be doing a lot more of that uh, punchy, maybe down tune, maybe not, um, can have longer a longer scale length than the, the top strings. And why is that? Well, instead of having the frets, you know, like this, straight up and down, they end up being, nope, other way, they end up being like this. So um, you can see how back here you would have a little bit more on the fretboard and a little less up top. And then same, it would push out push out the bottom part of the, the fretboard. And then the, the top of it would be you know back here or whatever that ratio ends up being. So that fan fret piece is, again, part of an intonation, part of a feel thing. If that feels good to you, by all means, use it. If it feels weird and doesn't inspire you, then there are plenty of other guitars. Right. Um, just find what works for you. Find what you like. And go from there. This is an example of the inline style headstock. You can see all of them are up top. Uh, for the reversed headstock, all of these would be down here. Um, and like the whole design would be basically flipped. So now this guitar has the truss rod access at the top unlike the, the last two that I showed as well. So um, when you're changing strings, uh, or if you need to gain access to this, you know you have to move the strings aside, take this plate off, then you get access to the truss rod in order to, to move it. So um, this guitar also has, this is a Floyd Rose bridge. You can see it has this whole cavity cut out. That's because um, all these extra pieces here um, need that extra space. It has the same kind of back where um, you have the springs in the cavity here, but then it has this extra piece, which you'll see, uh, this is for a nine volt battery. And you'll find this on guitars with uh, active pickups or guitars with built in preamps into them. Um, so here you can see this, so here you can see this guitar, the volume knob is a push pull. Um, so like this, when the, when it's up, the pickups are passive. When I want, um, want a boost, I can put this down and I've increased the output of the guitar, uh, quite significantly. So I'm more into that active pickup territory, which can be nice. It can lend itself to a little bit of compression. Um, I use it essentially as a built in boost. So if I'm going to take a solo and I need to you know, rise above the rest of the band, kick that on, and now you just have that little bit extra to, uh, to solo with. So um, these Floyd Roses are notorious for changing strings. Um, they make it a lot harder <laughs> than other, the other bridge types, but you cannot do wham stuff um, a certain style of, of wham bar, um, work without the, without the Floyd. So, um, one of the things that this bridge has that the other, um, the other bridges didn't are these micro tuners and that's to 
help adjust the string after you've locked it down with the locking tuners. Um, just for a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra adjustment. Or if you have a locking nut, which I don't have any guitars with a locking nut, but you'll see ones that have, um, well, it's just, you know, big metal pieces that come across and they just, they clamp the strings down, you know, right here so that whatever you tune them to, the string doesn't move. Um, one of the problems with that though is that you lose any ability to play anything here. Um, this guitar also is different because it has a neck through design construction and what that means is instead of coming here and having that bolt, the neck all the way down the body is one piece. So um, you can see the top has been covered but this back part here you can see where the two pieces of wood have come together around the neck and um, yeah that's how it's that's how it's held together and constructed so um, that can have an effect on tone I mention it <laughs> because depending on where your journey leads you into the guitar space online you might be you know berated with opinions on you know, whether or not a neck through is heavier or the bolt on is heavier because you have more ability for things to rattle uh, together and, and bounce the sound waves around. Ultimately, I don't, I don't care about those arguments. <laughs> it's whatever you like, you know, each guitar will have its own characteristics, its own personality. Um, by all means, go down the gear rabbit hole. It's a fun place. And the guitar community can be a really awesome place to hang out. Um, there are also a lot of people with a lot of opinions. Um, but that's like with anything where people care very deeply about what it is they're talking about. So uh, just something to be aware of, something to know about. And um, yeah, we'll move on to the next thing. <laughs> um, so this guitar also, uh, like the Petrucci one that I was showing, is a three-way selector rather than the, the five-way. So what that means is it is either fully the bridge, fully the neck, or one of the, one of the pieces from each. Uh, and those are the positions there. Um, the other thing that I have here are, right here, are individual coil splits. So what that means is if I you know, if I turn this, turn these on here, now it's, these are no longer humbuckers. They will play and sound like a Strat. If I, you know, I can do only one of them and then I can get kind of that um, hot telly sound where you have the um, single coil in the front with a, a humbucker in the back. Also a, a sort of a hot rotted uh, Strat sound out of that. Um, these have you know two different tone knobs, two different volumes uh, for each pickup. It's just the way that we we did it when um, when my dad and I built this guitar. So um, that's the that was the experiment piece. Um, we're just getting used to doing it. So realizing I have to clean this guitar. <laughs> All right, let's talk acoustics. All right, acoustics. So same kind of thing, right? You got headstock tuners. Um, you can see they are not locking. Got my little clip-on tuner here. Um, parts to call out. This little design spot around, um, well, okay, so this middle piece, the sound hole. Um, very obvious thing. You can see this has a little little pick guard as a design element here, but also helps with you know fast strumming. Um, the design the little inlays around the sound hole called the rosette. Um, you can see the, the bridge on these are you know glued down into the body, and you have the pegs that hold the string in place. So um, that's largely the difference there. Um, you know, shorter scale length. You can see this is a single cutaway version. 
um, on this particular guitar, it's an Alvarez, you have the electronics built into it. That lined up here. So you have a little bit of EQ, you have some, you have a phase switch, you got some volume. Um, I got a mid frequency thing on there, which is cool. There's a built in tuner. Um, some notch, some phase, some level. You know, just the um, just the amount of pickup that's coming out. So, um, yeah, it's been a while since I've looked at that. <laughs> so um, it's it's good because it'll control the sound. This guitar, and you'll see this on acoustics. Not only is this the uh, the strap hook, um, but it's also the output. So you plug your guitar, or you hang your strap there, plug your, uh, your cable in, and it's all one piece so that it's not distracted. Um, a lot of acoustics, you'll see the strap hook here, and um, some old guitars, you know, vintage ones won't have this top button, uh, but the strap will tie, um, they'll tie it on the headstock. They'll tie it on the headstock here. Um, you'll see a little piece of the leather or whatever holding it. Um, just again, some nice to know, <laughs> some nice to know pieces. Um, you can see here this white material around the edges that's binding. Uh, you'll find that a lot on, um, well, a lot on acoustics, but then also certain, um, certain electrics like I'm looking at my Les Paul has it. Um, my Ibanez eight string has it. Um, all my other ones don't. So yeah, anyway, things to call out there. Uh, everything else, you know, same stuff. This doesn't really have any inlays except for at the 12th fret. Uh, personally, I like that, that, um, that design, but when you're teaching lessons, it, it doesn't really help. Uh, but on stage, this thing's, uh, this thing's awesome. Later on, we can talk about tone woods. I mean, that's a, that's a whole episode, uh, on itself. So, all right. So yeah, at this point, we're going to call it good. Thank you for watching. Um, all the different housekeeping stuff. If you're on YouTube, click the, uh, the thumbs up button, comment, subscribe, you know, if, uh, if you want me to cover any particular topics or you want Chris to cover a particular topic, any questions you might have on uh, different parts of the guitar or any lesson ideas, things that you would um, just like to hear a discussion on, by all means, let us know. Drop a comment. Um, yeah, Like, comment, start, subscribe, share, all of that. It really helps us out. And stay tuned for the next one. And we'll see you down the road. Thanks.